Hi, I'm Perry Romanowski, and in this video, you're going to learn when you need to use a cosmetic preservative and when you might not need one. But before we get to that, I want to tell you about our upcoming webinar, which will teach you all the main things you'll need to know about cosmetic preservatives and how to formulate with them. I will be presenting this 45-minute webinar, which will go through standard preservatives, natural preservatives, how to formulate with them, and everything else you need to know about cosmetic preservation. To sign up for the preservation webinar, click the link next to this video. All right, let's talk about cosmetic preservatives. Before we get into when you need to use them, let's briefly touch on why you need to use them. Cosmetic preservatives are not something formulators want to use. They rarely provide any performance benefit, they add additional cost, and some consumers are afraid of them. Creating formulas that your consumers are afraid of is a terrible business practice. If we could formulate without preservatives, that is what every company would do. But despite the negatives of using preservatives, there is one very good reason to use them. Preservatives are the best way to ensure that most cosmetic products are safe from microbial contamination. While scaring consumers with the ingredients in your formula is bad, selling unpreserved cosmetics that can cause actual harm and disease is much, much worse. As a responsible formulator, you cannot sell products that are dangerous. Just don't do it. Never compromise product safety for any reason. So how do you make sure your formula is not dangerous? Well, the easiest, most effective way is to add a preservative to your formula. In fact, you should always use a preservative whenever your formula has enough water for microbes to live and enough food for those microbes to grow. This means products like shampoos, lotions, gels, conditioners, and most other liquid cosmetic products should have some type of preservative. It's just the safest thing that you can do. But I know what some of you are thinking, can't we make a safe product without preservatives? Well, maybe. While I always recommend using a preservative, there are some cases in which you may not necessarily need a preservative. These are limited, but here are some examples. Number one, you might not need a separate preservative if there is no water or a very low level of water activity. Since microbes need water to grow and survive, no water in your formula means they can't. However, they can persist in your formula without water, so even though you don't need a preservative to keep your product safe, um, water-free, unpreserved formulas can still spread microbes to your consumer's skin, where it can grow, thrive, and, and cause problems. This is a low-level risk, but it's still a risk. All right, number two. You might not need a separate preservative if there is no microbe food in your formula. Bottled water does not contain preservatives because microbes can't grow without food. If your formula contains no microbe food, then you wouldn't need a preservative. However, microbes can feed on a wide variety of molecules such as surfactants, proteins, carbohydrates, extracts, and pretty much any other useful ingredient that you put in a cosmetic. Number three, you might not need a separate preservative if the pH of your formula is very high or very low. Most microbes prefer to grow in a pH range from 6.5 to 7.5, but there are plenty of buggers that can tolerate higher and lower pH ranges. However, you can avoid most microbial problems if you formulate below pH of 4 and above a pH of 10. Unfortunately, formulating at these extreme pHs can cause eye irritation, skin irritation, so it's generally not recommended. Number four, you might not need a separate preservative if your formula contains a large level of alcohol. Microbes can't grow in alcohol, which is why things like vodka, gin, and rum don't require preservatives. Traditionally, alcohol-based formulas like hairspray and colognes also don't have preservatives in them. In fact, if your formula contains 20% or more alcohol, you probably don't need a preservative. But there's a lot of reasons alcohol isn't used more widely in cosmetics, including the fact that it is expensive, it interferes with the function of many ingredients, and it's flammable. 
it's also uh, used is restricted by some environmental regulations. So even if it works in your formula, you often can't use it anyway. And number five, you might not need a separate preservative if you use non-contaminated raw materials, make your formulas under antiseptic conditions, and use a single-use airtight package. Dangerous microbes would have a tough time growing under these conditions. Of course, you'll have an even tougher time producing formulas under these conditions that are affordable to most people. All right, let's recap. Always use a preservative if your formula contains enough water and food for microbes to grow. But you might be able to avoid using a preservative if there's a low level of water, there's no microbe food, the pH is really high or really low, there's a high level of alcohol, or if you produce products under antiseptic single-use conditions. So there you have it. While it is always a good idea to use a preservative, there are some instances when you might not need to use one. Even under those conditions, I recommend you use preservatives because it's much better to be safe than sorry. Now you're wondering, okay, what preservatives should I use? Well, that is the topic that will be covered in our upcoming webinar. Click on the link next to this video to register for the webinar. In this webinar, you will learn which preservatives are the most effective and why you should use them. You'll get information about traditional and effective natural preservatives. You'll discover how to use formulation techniques to limit your preservative use and learn which preservatives work best in which types of formulas. Plus, you'll get to ask your own questions before and during the webinar. And as a special bonus, you'll get a list of dozens of the most popular preservatives and blends with their trade names, regulatory status, use levels, and range of effectiveness. This will be a guide you will continue to reference over and over during your formulation. So click on the link next to this video to register for the preservative webinar. Thanks again for watching. I'm Perry Romanowski, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.